And welcome back to our next lesson in linear functions. We're going to be taking a little more uh, information from our idea of slope. So we're going to look at 6.2, slopes of a parallel and perpendicular lines. So before we start looking at how to actually accomplish this, let's define the word parallel and perpendicular. Parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart. So if you look on a graph, there are ones that are never get closer together or never get further apart. They're sometimes called equidistance. And if you continue these lines forever and ever and ever, they will always never ever meet. Now a perpendicular line, these are lines that will intersect each other at right angles or 90 degrees. So basically ones that cross at 90 degrees right angles. So let's look at an example about two parallel lines. So in this example here, we're told that these two lines are parallel. So if they're parallel, they will have the same slope, and that's pretty key. In order for them never to get closer or further apart, the slopes have to be the same. One little test you can do is you can draw two congruent triangles to represent the rise and the run. Now congruent simply means the same, same size. So let's look at our blue line first. Let's choose two points. We have to figure out a slope. So our two points again should be good points. They should be ones that cross the corner of our graph. So I'm going to choose this one right here. And there's a bunch I could choose. I'll just choose this one right here. Now, what are the coordinates of this point from point 1? Well, the x value is negative 3, and the y value is 0. Negative 3 on the x, 0 on the y. Point 2, well, this has a x value of negative 1, and a y value of 4. So let's calculate the slope of our blue line. So we're going to call this blue. Our formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the y value from point 2 is 4 minus the y value from point 1 which is 0, divided by the x value of 0.2, which is negative 1, subtract the x value of 0.1, which is negative 3. Four minus zero, well that's four. Negative one, subtract negative two, subtracting a negative, same as adding. So you can think of negative one plus 3, which is 2, and my slope for the blue line is 2. Now let's look at the red line. Again, let's choose two points to compare our slope. Let's go with this one right here, and let's choose this one right here. Point 1, the coordinates are on the x of 0, and a y of 1. Point 2 has an x of 2 and a y of 5. So now let's get the slope of our red line. So again, formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the y value from point 2 is 5 minus the y value from point 1, which is 1, divided by the x value of point 2, which is 2, minus the x value of point 1, which is 0. So again, we've got 4 over 2, 
which gives me a slope of 2. So you can see here that these lines are indeed parallel because we do get the same slope. But what about this idea of congruent triangles? Well, if we literally followed and made a triangle on our blue line, it would look like this. Here's our triangle right there. So now our slope here is rise over run. So we're making a triangle here that we ran to and we rised for. So we have a triangle with proportions of 2 and 4. Let's do the same thing with the red one, the red triangle. Make my slope into a triangle. And again, the triangle I'm making here has a run of 2 and a rise of 4. So congruent triangles means they have the same dimensions, same ratios, 2 to 4. Both triangles, both slopes, they're all the same. So I've got parallel lines here. So now let's look at this in terms of no more graph, just some points. Line AB passes through the point 0, 0 and negative 2, 1. And line CD, these are just the names of my points, passes through 1, 6 and 5, 4. Are these lines parallel? So essentially I'm saying, do I have the same slope? So let's look at AB. Now again, whenever I have my coordinate points, I know the x is first and the y is second. So let's do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The y from the second point is 1 minus 0 divided by negative 2 minus 0. So 1 divided by negative 2. So we can express this as negative 1 half. Now let's try doing line CD. Same idea. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The y2 was 4 minus the y1, which is 6, divided by the x2, which is 5, minus the x1, which is 1. So this becomes 4 minus 6 is negative 2, divided by 5 minus 1, which is 4, and of course we can reduce this, we'll pull the negative sign, to negative one-half. And because negative one-half and negative one-half, the answer is yes, they are parallel. Perfect, and they're parallel because the slopes are equal. Boom. Okay, so parallel lines, they have the same slope. What about perpendicular lines? Well, the perpendicular lines, the slopes are not going to be the same. In fact, there is a relationship to the slopes where they are the negative reciprocals of each other. So if I have my two lines and I calculate the slope and they are negative reciprocals, then I have parallel lines. The question now becomes, what's a negative reciprocal? So a negative reciprocal, you are going to take your slope as a fraction. And I just want to mention that a half, well, that's an easy slope as a fraction. But what if my slope is 2? How do I change 2 into a fraction? I can put anything over 1. So 12 as a fraction is 12 over 1. 
So I take my slope and I get into fraction form. Most time it will be already, but every now and then you will have to make into a fraction. You're going to flip the numerator and the denominator. So the top and the bottom numbers are going to flip. That makes it a reciprocal. And then to make it a negative reciprocal, you change the sign. If your slope is positive, you change it to a negative. If your slope is negative, you change to a positive. So let's try a couple of these right away. If my slope is 3 over 5, I'm going to make a negative reciprocal. I'm going to take the 5 and the 3 and flip it. So I get 5 over 3. And now I make it negative. Negative 5 over 3. So my slope to 3 over 5 is negative 5 over 3. Next example, my slope is 2. What I need is a fraction form, so I will make that over 1. So I flip it to get a half, and now I make it negative. Next one, I got a slope of a quarter. I'm going to flip it, so that becomes 4 over 1. And now I make it negative. Perfect. Now because it's over 1, I could just express this slope now as negative 4. So if I'm looking for perpendicular lines, I need to understand the concept of a negative reciprocal. So now let's look at our question here. This is the type you're going to see most often. Are the lines parallel, same slope? Are they perpendicular, negative reciprocals, or are they neither? They're not parallel or perpendicular, in which case I'm going to have something else than the same or negative reciprocal. So my first line is AB, and it goes to the point 0, 1, 2, 0. And my second line is CD, which goes through negative 3, 0, negative 1, negative 4. So I like drawing on my work a little bit. I like putting the x and the y over my coordinates so I remember where everything's coming from. Let's do a, b. So formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 0 minus y1, which is 1 divided by x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is 0. So we get an answer of negative 1 over 2, which of course is negative half. Now let's do CD. Get the formula down again. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. My y2 is 4 minus 0 divided by x2, which is negative 1, subtract negative 3. So 4 minus 0 gives me 4 negative 1 minus negative 3. What's the same as adding? So negative 1, that gives me positive 2. So 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. So my slopes now are negative a half and positive 2. Well the slopes, they're not parallel because they're not the same. But let's take a look at this. If I take one half, negative one half, and I do the negative reciprocal, I would flip it to get two, and my negative sign turns to a positive. Therefore, two and two are the same, so my slopes are negative reciprocals of one another. Slopes are negative reciprocal. So because they're negative reciprocal, these lines are perpendicular.
So picking out a negative reciprocal of negative a half and two is a little uh, difficult. We want to make sure we understand what the concept is and we can actually do it. Let's go to our textbook, please. Let's do page 349. Two from the A's, five from the B's, one from the C's.